What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat, and we're here today with the next iteration in our Shadowrun Returns LP. Where we had left off, we had dodged down into the domicile of insanity, and we had come together into the nut house to find ourselves a doctor who was presumably chopping up people all over town, including our friend Sam. So we were about to go through this door right here where we had left off. In fact, I haven't even turned off the game since I did that last recording. So here we go! Oh, I've got to get everybody over here. Never mind. I always forget that they use the Baldur's Gate system here. There we go. So I think once we get the majority of everybody through the door, we should be alright. What might be an interesting concept for the future if people are working on individual developments is to have people fighting in different rooms at the same time. Just something that I think would be interesting. You could zone people into different areas. You could do that to a certain extent in Baldur's Gate 2, as I remember. You could fight in two separate zones at the same time. Now, the Halls of Disrepair, sounding a little bit fantasy-esque here, as you venture deeper into the asylum, you see that the inside is every bit as bad as the outside. Gone is any attempt to uphold sanitary hospital aesthetics. With peeling paint, cracked floors, and exposed conduits, the pretense of medical care is shattered. In this modern era, Mercy Mental Hospital is a throwback to the barbarian asylums of old, prisons and torture chambers rather than places of healing. It's clear that Dr. Holmes is spending his money on something other than this facility. You continue on. Holmes can only run so far. If you ever want to read something completely or watch something totally fascinating, you should look into old asylums. The asylums of the old 1800s, 1700s, crazy bedlam back then. It was, it was wild. It'll, it'll be an interesting experience, I promise you that. Well, I'm going to claim the cover before anybody else can, so let me turn on my droid. And I'm going to have Woogie take... Ooh, that's a tough choice. 72% he might get two shots off. But maybe I want to get closer? I don't know. Eh, whatever. Fire away, Woogie! Yes! Alright, so 25 damage before our opponents could even act. Let me get him into cover since he's going to be all up on his little transponder for the next foreseeable future. I'm going to move... Let's move Hidden Fancy as far in as we possibly can. She's point blank. I'm a little worried about hitting... Oh, it's a Violet Patient. Never mind. Eh. Wow, 36 damage. Really? That is an impressive output. I did not expect that at all. So we missed the shot right there. But I somehow sincerely doubt that Mr. Marchette is going to miss his option here. So let's swing away and there's 10 damage so two more down the violent patient is going to close with me does he have a pipe what is that hold on zoom in increase my view my frame of reference mm, it looks like a pipe or something it's a pokey stick it's something that would probably hurt if I inserted it into my eye and I think that's really probably one of the prerequisites by which every horrible object of pain is judged would it hurt if I stabbed you in the eye with it 12 damage there from our first shot we did upgrade our gun a few episodes ago. Woogie's going to be taking two shots here, but he should be able to take care of him. And there it is. Our faithful pal Woogie has handled business. We're going to give him the trademark Woogie High Five, which is more or less, it's kind of like a pet for a Roomba. You just take him and you pet him. He prefers to call it a High Five, but it is what it is. There's a mental patient in here. I feel kind of bad about butchering a mental patient who's behind bars, so I don't think I'm going to go that far. We're going to let the whole thing <laughs> ride out. I don't think I'm going to participate in that kind of butchery. In another life, perhaps. In another life. Oh, the intercom begins speaking as soon as you approach. Holmes must be watching from somewhere. You don't understand, do you? This is a place for broken things. But only by further breaking them can they be remade. And so, we must break you. Well then. What a pleasant experience. Let me see if I can get Marchette somewhere on a corner here, possibly looking around. I'm worried that if I walk up in there, I'm going to get myself into trouble. I don't see anything that's going to allow me to bust into that gate, so I guess I'll just advance. Woogie's going to use a double move. We'll send him in first. This is probably a terrible choice. I probably could have put him back here past a turn, then had him step in. But I'm curious. I'm very, very curious, so... I'm going to live with the results here. Let me put her on Overwatch just in case. And then maybe I'll have Shannon swing wide as well. And can Shannon take a shot from here? No, line of sight is blocked. So let's have Shannon just get into cover. And we'll just hope for the best there. Oh, I don't think that patient is actually necessarily aware of us. Oh, there's a couple of them. Well then... I think with how it's working right now, they're pretty much trapped in the hallway, so it could be worse. So there's 20 damage, 
and then we'll do perhaps another 20. Oh, a miss. Well, that just grinds my gears. Move down to here. Maybe Woogie can shoot past. He's a robot. Robots have good aim, right? So Woogie was unable to fire past our awful, insane foes. But luckily, I don't know if this is going to hit Savoy, possibly, with the shotgun. So maybe I'll... No, don't reload. Maybe I'll go for a little bit more precision with the assault rifle, just to make sure. And nothing there. We are just getting a nice string of misses, unfortunately. Can't make a shot from that spot. She doesn't have the ability to do anything... Well, I don't want to slow anybody. I guess for now, we'll just have her bypass her turn. It looks like somebody else is going to sally out to fight with us anyways. Savoy, you better make this swing. Well, I guess that's treading the line of what I wanted you to do. When you tell somebody to make the swing, I guess there was no specification as to how much damage he should probably do, but I'll take it. I will take it if I have no other option. There's an unstable mental patient. I feel really bad about killing all these crazy people. These ones, well, that one punched me in the face, so maybe if we back off with Savoy, we'll be alright. I don't really want to risk it. It says they're violent. I mean... I, this isn't how I would conduct. I'd probably use, like, beanbag guns or something, IRL, but I'm doing the best I can with what I have, guys. I'm doing the best I can. Don't judge me. <laughs> Let me throw a mana bolt at that one. It moved around, and it's got a weapon. I think it's a she, it looks like. It definitely had a weapon. I'm not positive that she's wearing pants. Oh, she's got a gun. Okay, so the insane person has a firearm. That's pleasant. Out of the frying pan, I suppose, and into the fire. Let's get Woogie lined up so that next turn he could possibly do- Oh, there's a bunch of them in here. Well, all things to consider, I guess, in the greater scheme of things. I don't think we can fire through those gates for whatever reason. Let me see how far I can get Savoy down here. I'm also going to haste him really quickly, or give him stride, I guess. And then we'll have him move all the way down to there. If he takes any further damage, I'll probably take a turn out and have him regain as much HP as he possibly can. Just kind of flank the gates right there. Take a couple, like, cover fires. I wish you could suppress people in this game. It'd be an interesting concept to put down suppressing fire. I mean, it's possible. Oh, are you serious? The crazy people have grenades? Where did they get those from? I need to stop making assumptions about what they may or may not be equipped with. I definitely didn't expect any crazy people to have hand grenades. That's... Military-grade hardware is not one of those things you would expect them to have on hand. I mean, maybe it's a therapy tool or something, but I don't know what kind of therapy you could possibly do with a hand grenade. Don't reload. Let's use the shoddy on this guy. I'm actually going to walk straight up. We're going to point blanker. And we only did half damage. We're gonna, there's a lot of that going around in this last turn or two. We might consider putting a mana bolt on her, maybe? 99% chance to hit. Hopefully another weak hit. Great. I love my weak hits. They make my life so much easier. Taking a shot right there, though, that was kind of a Hail Mary shot. 47% chance, but Null Sweat, they're down now. So maybe Savoy is pretty good at moving. Just in the interest of not being absolute and total grenade bait, I guess I'll keep us separated. I can take a shot from there. That worked out fine. 12 damage. And Woogie's got a couple shots, too. So I'm going to give Woogie the honors of laying down the fire. Unfortunately, Woogie did not come through for us. There's a shotgun blast, and that was kind of a test. I did that on purpose, just so you guys know. I wanted to see if it could hit if it could hit Savoy. It indeed did do a miss roll for Savoy, so we know now that the shotgun spray can catch somebody. I don't know how much the oh, it's going to heal 20. That might be a bit much. I might consider using a lesser medkit on him. I think she's still got AP left. Yeah, so let's use the 10 HP one on him. I don't really want to dedicate to a 20 HP heal, just because it seems like a bit of a waste. I don't see anything lootable in here. Well, I don't know if maybe I was supposed to go in there and hit one of the boxes or something to open this door. I'll have people spread out and we'll see if they can get down this hallway first and foremost. We'll just check the main corridor to make sure we're safe. I'm tempted to deactivate Woogie so that I can get in on some of my AR abilities. And in fact, I think that's what I might do. So I'll unplug Woogie for now. We'll send Hidden Fancy in to check this hallway, although it doesn't look like she's got a very good view. 
move Shannon up. And I'd rather use him as a machine gun combatant right now. First and foremost, let's move Marchette up and see an ex-surgeon. Okay. Well, he doesn't have anything that's gonna kind of seal the deal here. It takes two AP to throw any of the grenades or anything he's got. So I suppose I'll just close the gap, since that seems to be the best that I can do. Oh, the doctor's actually getting attacked by his own boy now. And then we're going to eat a shotgun blast to the dome. It's a good thing we decided to heal. That's what I was a little bit worried about. I didn't want anybody in critical condition here before we got much further. I'm going to use her ability to haste so that I can get Splattercat into combat a little bit quicker. So he's got three AP now. And it's going to take all three, huh? Yikes. Well, let's get her into cover. And I think that shot right there may endanger Savoy. So let's whip out the assault rifle and we'll just put a round on him. Ten more damage. He's got a lot of HP though. So it looks like he's got around 40 HP. It's going to take us a little while longer to actually liquidate him. And I'm going to keep him back behind cover for now because I don't want him to eat any random shots to the face. Let's move Savoy over. And Savoy's going to do weak damage with his axe. Not something that I'm incredibly happy about. I think we were somewhat relying on him to get things done, but... Oh, I thought that was an In the Matrix thing. Well, never mind. I guess I'll consider using Mark Target from now on. Didn't even realize I had that. The things we learn. No other abilities looking especially pertinent for the time being. Ooh, I was hoping he would actually finish the job for me. Savoy's looking real rough right now. So we want to consider giving Savoy all the healing, love, and attention we can in the near future. Because while he looks rough around the edges, everybody needs a little love sometimes, as the old song goes. With two shots left, I think I'll consider Burst Fire for the first time in a while. And so down goes that mental patient, Shannon Half Sky. It sounds like it cut our combat music, so we're probably fine. Shannon Half Sky is going to move up to this cover. We'll check this gnarly looking hallway over here. It's got all kinds of bones and nastiness going on. Savoy's going to heal himself, obviously, for that 20 damage. And I'm probably going to stop using him as my point man from now on. He's actually a little bit the worse for wear after this in total endeavor, so I prefer to keep him out of harm's way for now. Anything over here that's lootable? I thought I... Oh, there it is. Okay. We'll have Splattercat check that out. A surgical cart contains a gate key. Okay, so we've grabbed ourselves a new quest item. Let's move... Well, I guess we don't have to move everybody up to here, but we can try. There we go. There's an unlabeled trivid disc in the second drawer. So we've got just about everything on hand that we could ever possibly want for this area. Let's move Shannon on up. And in the next turn, we'll consider letting her grab whatever this is. The smell of rotting flesh is immense. The remains appear to be from multiple metahumans. Okay, so that's interesting to note. Possible, like, metahuman kidnapping and dissection going on. Maybe a little bit of, like, racist future KKK type stuff. I've got 3 AP, so let's book it on out of here. We've got all kinds of speed on our side. And we gotta wait for Woogie to catch up. How adorable. I wanna make sure everybody's reloaded before we go into the next area, so I'll probably take a second out and make sure that happens. Don't need to reload an axe. The axe perfectly fine at keeping on chugging, even once it's completely depleted of ammo, because the ammo is your muscles, such as they may be. I mean, my, my axe-swinging muscles are probably minute, to say the least. Axe-swinging, not something I have a whole lot of experience with. I mean, I've chopped firewood every now and again, but beyond that, I'm no lumberjack. If I was, I would be able to grow a beard. Unfortunately, my, my plans to grow a beard are always sabotaged because my upper lip, like the center part of my upper lip, I read it's a genetic thing. I can't grow hair on that little, I don't know, it's like that little canal on your upper lip. I can't grow hair right there. So my beard always has like this weird gap underneath my nose. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a reverse 1920s. I, I have no idea. It's weird. It's like a reverse Charlie Chaplin. That's how I'll put it. So let's unlock the gate here and bust in here before I completely and totally run off on just a random tangent. It's interesting that we can't get in there. I might consider taking a look in this room really fast. I don't know if it requires LOS for nodes to pop up. I'm holding down the out key this entire time. I don't think it does. Somehow I sincerely doubt there's anything in there that we want. From another intercom, Dr. Holmes continues, Someone once told me that I was a broken thing. 
But he also said I could remake myself. He wanted to break me down so I could put myself back together again, and I did. But only after I broke him. I could remake you as well. What a wonderfully twisted thoughts, or what wonderfully twisted thoughts must churn in a mind such as yours. But I'm more inclined to use you for parts. Hey man, I'm not a Nova. You can't just chop me up. I don't play that way. Let's get everybody- I hear combat music again, so I suppose somebody's gonna- Oh god. So we have an enormous troll with a shotgun. Worse and worse, it seems. So we used up all of our- Oh, never mind, our haste ran out. So let's see what the shoddy's gonna do for us right now. A 99% chance to hit, so let's do it. 27 right there, and Hidden Fancy is really proving herself to be part of a just a wonderful advancement for our team. She's just being a great asset. I suppose we'll just take... Oh, Shannon coming through. She must have got jealous. She got jealous there for a second. I was giving too much praise to the troll. Or the orc or whatever she is. She's an orc. She's too small to be a troll, right? Yeah, she's an orc shadow runner. We can open... Can we open this? No. I'm holding down out, taking a look around. I don't think there's anything else that we can use for the time being. That room continues to vex me. But I just don't know... We could take a look around, I guess. Let me see if there's anything in here that'll unlock that gate. I didn't take a good look when I was back up in here. We'll bypass the turn. I'm just gonna have Hidden Fancy make a run for it. Yeah, I don't see anything that can be activated in there. Just making sure in case the out key is affected by line of sight. Oh, that door's gonna open. Weak. Well, I guess I'll jump behind cover then and we'll set everybody else up for combat. That's fine. With one AP left, there's not a whole lot else I can do with her, unfortunately. We can't get him behind that cart on the wall, but we can kind of corner him up right here in case this guy tries to bum rush us. Which could or it may or may not happen, I don't know. It looks like he's not feeling that confident about the- oh, maybe he's not even activated. That's the other possibility is he might not even know we're here. Let's pass the turn and find out. Yeah, he doesn't even know we're here, so burst fire! Sneak attack. And that's how we do it. We may be a Decker, but we're also part ninja. I mean, who else would roll around in a sweet outfit like that? It's definitely somebody that knows their way around a kunai, I would think. That guy's got what looks like a machete. So I suppose we'll have another burst fire put down on him. Let's take a turn out and have everybody reload for the time being. And then just advance as quickly as possible. And then, I don't know what I want to do with him. I should probably... Well, I didn't bring a healer along, so it's sort of my own fault, but, you know... I guess we'll move Savoy up to there. And then we'll also move Shannon on up and in. It looks like we got like a chemistry kit or something over here. I can't really tell what that is. It's glowing though. It's glowing in a threatening manner. That hue of green is never a good thing. That's like the color of the little glass thing that Rasputin has in Anastasia. And that color, whenever something takes on that property, anytime that color shows up, you know nothing good is at hand. Something horrible is about to take place. I'll have her go up and investigate. By all means, come. You have proven yourself a truly fine specimen. I can think of a hundred uses for one such as you. Alright. The Trivid player holds a collection of personal diaries. Some of the video files are missing. We'll insert and playback video one. Got some cutout chips in last week. Tried them out on the patients with violent flashbacks, hoping it would at least mellow them out some. It was like night and day. Once the chip was installed, all of their psychotic break triggers were blocked. Miss Yuskin has gone four days without attacking the staff or herself. Video number three. In today's interview, Miss Yuskin told me she hated her legs. She said they were stumpy and unattractive. I haven't done a transplant in years, but I offered to give her new ones. Her face lit up like it was Christmas. At least her cutout can block the surgery and painful recovery process. I've put in an order to the organ grinders to send me anything leggy. Maybe I'll get some elf legs in and see how she likes them. Okay. Video number six. I was walking to the organ grinders downtown, and there was some kind of event happening at Mega Media. They had a puppet there from Maria Mercurial's label with a Persona fixed chip installed, making her an exact doppelganger. 
They were using her to hawk some SimSense release of Mercurial Live Show, but it gave me an idea. The cutouts, the body modifications, and my healthy supply of patience. I'm perfectly set up to be a Bunraku fixer. If I can find a supplier for Persona fixed chips, I can sell full price Bunraku, even program the behavior trees. Found a buyer for the first Bunraku. A man in the Barrens offered me 20,000 for the female troll I've been modifying. He likes them big, he says. That's all that's left is to now that all that's left is to arrange delivery. He says he can put me in touch with some more buyers if I'll accommodate special orders. These morons' lives are already over anyways. The least they could do is line my pockets. As I recall, Bunraku, if you don't know, is a robot prostitute, if I remember correctly? Or it's like a... It's like a brain... It's an implant you put in that brainwashes somebody and makes them into, like, a human puppet, if I remember correctly. But usually they're used for prostitution in Shadowrun. Now, I may be completely wrong, but I know there is something like that in Shadowrun. Okay, and we can exit the scene, so let's do that. Let's get everybody on up out of here. It's way too early to cut off the episode right now. I hate to do one scene at a time anyway, so maybe I'll have this one run a little bit long to make up for the fact that the last episode, I, I ran you guys a little bit short there, so it'll be okay. The Emerald City Ripper. Before you is a medical lab turned torture chamber. The smell of old blood and decayed flesh permeates the room. Gory stains speak of the body's fluids spilled without regard for well-being or hygiene. There are bodies, probably former patients, trapped in hideous machines enduring horrific experiments. The subjects you see all appear dead. Any that aren't must wish that they were. You've chased Holmes to his lair. Just as his face reveals an ugly soul, so does his safe haven, it would seem. Holmes. Silas. The Emerald City Ripper. The elf is a monster beyond compare. It's time to end this. Okay, so we've got one of those flip-flap gates. That's what I call those. Whenever they have one of these at like an aviary or something, I call it a flip-flap gate. You gotta walk through the flip-flaps. It's the only way to get things done in life. Another intercom crackles at your elbow. One solid blow would offer a few minutes of blessed silence, but this is also a rare chance to get a word in on the good doctor who greets you with more of his chittering laughter. You are a persistent one. A fine specimen indeed. We both know how this ends. Let's get to it already. Patience, patience, we're not done here yet. I have one last examination to conduct. I'm gonna say Pretzel. His name is Pitazel, but I like to say Pretzel better, so Pretzel, subdue them. I don't think Pretzel's gonna do any such thing. Let's go ahead and... I'm not gonna put Savoy into the line of fire first. I think I'm actually gonna take Hidden Fancy and have her take point on this one. So I guess... Just kind of step into the room, and then we'll just accept the consequences as we go along. Splattercat's got an AP left. Oh, dear. Pretzel is the giant dude with all the medical modifications. Okay. Well, my guess is that we really, really, really don't want to have a run-in with him in melee. So what I'm going to consider doing is let's step into here, and maybe we can kite him around in the worst-case scenario. I see a summon right there, so we might consider doing that as well. Oh, there's more of them. So we have a hired mage. All right. All things to consider. I'll actually have Savoy line up in the back, just so he can take a few more steps. Ooh, his movement range was brutal. Okay. All things that we're going to have to deal with. So he threw a fireball at Savoy. That's fine. And then he's going to throw what looks like a mana bolt possible. Oh, he's going to increase his aim. Alright, so we can do a full auto on him and see how it goes. And we did what looks like 24 damage altogether. Not the best attack, not what I really would have hoped for, but it is something. I'm not going to risk using the shotgun at this point blank range because both of my people might get hit in the background. Instead what I'm going to do is let's take two shots with the assault rifle and just hope for the best. So there's 15 more damage. Not satisfactory, unfortunately. We might consider possibly summoning from there. Yeah, that's going to work out. So Pestilence. Cool. Well, Pestilence has an AP left. Let's see what Pestilence can do. Confusion. The target enemy switches to your team and you control them for two rounds. And then Acid Stream. A stream of acid that does ongoing damage for one round. Let's throw that at the Hired Mage. Now... 
I'm gonna throw Savoy to the wolves right now. And Savoy's accuracy really leaves something to be desired. He's doing a little bit of damage, god. He's got a lot of interesting side effects that he's able to inflict on us. Can't you do anything right, Pretzel? So we've got the Surgeon here. I'm gonna focus on killing Pretzel, to be honest. He seems like the fundamental the fundamental concern right now. Let's throw a Mana Bolt at him. And if he comes back to life after I kill him, I'm going to be very, very saddened. So he's got a pretty good chance to escape. Let's do 3 AP. Alright, so that worked out in our favor. He's got a 67% chance to hit Pretzel. But I think instead... Well, let's keep the focus going where it goes. So there's 5 damage. He's losing an AP though. So that's good. So he's lost a bunch of AP there. That's actually going to stop him from doing any other crazy stuff. Just kind of pulling the nut bag out and just completely annihilating us with it. Splattercat's pretty injured for the time being. I'm going to do a burst fire. And so down goes Pretzel. Splattercat's not looking so good though. That was probably an unwise decision. Let's see what we can do with Savoy with this surgeon. So he's down. I think Hidden Fancy had a medkit. And so let's have Hidden Fancy line up right here. And then she's going to take a turn and use an extra goody goody medkit on Splattercat to make sure that this doesn't come to an abrupt end. Let's see, a 25% chance to hit Holmes. Let's go ahead and sneak her behind the medical equipment here. He's got a 9% escape chance. I'm going to give him 3 AP because 9%, I'll gamble on those. I will definitely gamble on those odds. His mind control will be up, but let's use Acid Stream first and foremost. And we actually hit with a 41% chance. We got 84% chance to hit with the rest of it, so I'm just going to keep on slinging spew at him. Just blowing snot rockets in his direction. This is one of those critters of Nurgle, but I'm crossing over with my lore, which some people twinge when you do that. What happened to the mage that was over here, out of curiosity? I'm a little confused. There was definitely a mage over here, but I wasn't paying attention well enough, so maybe something bad happened to him, I hope? I mean, we can only really hope that something just terrible happened to him. Holmes is actually doing pretty well at keeping himself in cover, so I'm going to use both my AP to get myself into cover. Hidden Fancy's going to do similarly. I'm going to have a flank on this side. Shannon can't take a shot from there. So instead, what I think I'll have her do... Oh, she's only got one AP. All right. So, oh, yeah, she's controlling a minion right now. That's fine. Maybe I'll have her sneak in then. He hits really hard. He's doing a fair bit of damage, so let's keep our escape chance as low as possible for now. He's only going to have one AP on this turn. Ooh, Savoy Marchetti is not looking so good. He's injured. Very injured, to say the least. Let's have him move over with Splattercat, and then I'll use one of my AP to get him patched up slightly. There's a bit more damage. Oh, he backlashed on himself. That's one of those little known features about, they don't talk about it much in this game, but there's a thing called a backlash. And in, in Shadowrun, if you try and cast something that's outside of your capabilities, or something that you're too tired to cast, it backlashes on you and it actually causes you intense mental agony. Take a couple shots at him. I can't do that for now, but I will consider using an aim shot. We missed, even with the aim shot, so that's disappointing. I'll live with it, but it's still disappointing. Maybe a mana bolt will lay him out. Oh, I slowed him on accident. That was my bad. Yeah, living on the edge right there. I wanted to gamble. I felt gambly. So let's move our Pestilence bot over here, or our nasty little bugger. He's killed off the Emerald City Ripper now. Oh, and that's the end of the combat. We're actually out of the woods here. So let's see what he has to say before we cut this off. Holmes drops to the ground, the light in his eyes fading fast, but something keeps the shriveled husk of his soul stuck to this mortal coil for a few moments more. This is a place of broken things. I remake them. She, she asked me to remake her. He manages one more laugh, his glazed eyes rolling towards a workbench across the way. She was playing. Both of us. Alright, so an action point. Our experience has increased our ability to operate in dangerous situations. With a final bloody whimper, the Emerald City Ripper breathes his last. So down he goes. So we have to look into his motives now, it says up at the top. 
we'll take a look around the room here. We don't have a ton of time left. But I don't see anything interesting here. That's probably like the Genova tank right there. We're probably going to get some crazy cutscene or something interesting is probably going to happen. It's the only green tank in the room. And like I said, things that are inherently that glowy green color, they're always up to no good. Holmes' workbench falls somewhere between coroner slab and medieval torture device. It's decorated in many colors of death and littered with the instruments of that trade. To one side, there's a leather-bound journal stuffed with uneven pages. To the other is a pox sec. Its small screen still glowing. Beneath the bench is a rolled sheaf of paper is held closed with a tied length of surgical tubing. Taking a further look around, the bench has clearly played host to numerous bodies over its lifetime. It includes limb restraints as well as skeletal traction mechanisms. At this table, Holmes likely dismembered bodies or quite possibly put them back together. The tackiness of the blood suggests it has been used relatively recently. We'll skim his journal then. Leafing through the pages, you find few intelligible entries. Holmes may not have been a real doctor, and his handwriting certainly fits the stereotype. Or, but his handwriting fits the stereotype. Stuffed in the last few pages is a copy of disinterment orders from a local cemetery, with the grave's occupant marked as Melinda Watts. Access the pocket secretary. Holmes is still logged in, granting you access to his currently loaded files. We're a decker. We don't need to be logged in. Prominent among them is a hospital report from a donor's program. It lists the organs beside the names and vital statistics of the recipients. Your eye catches Sam Watt's name beside the entry for liver. Also on the list are the Ripper's other known victims, along with others who may have shared in the same fate. Let's look at the sheets of paper here. Oh, there's a large sum of new yen, which is easily transferred to our account. So there's like four and a half grand. That's good. Getting ourselves a little bit of that scratch. Unfurling the large sheet of paper, you discover a diagram of the human female form rendered to an impressive level of detail. It appears to be the blueprint for making Holmes' very own monster. Funsies. So with a final look around, this place is just horrific. What's over here? Is that the same thing I already looked at? Just want to make sure. Okay. I don't see anything else. I was hoping I could deck in right here. Unfortunately, it's not like I'm going to let me slot on. So we'll check this final little area. Oh, Bunraku's. Alright. His chip slot is still fresh. The open wound is pink and wet and lurid. His voice drips innuendo, but his eyes say nobody's home. Well, hello there. Did you come to play? Are you okay? How long have you been here? Of course we're okay. We're ready for a little party. You want to have a little play party with me? By your name? <laughs> They're missing a string. The string container is not functioning. She's assembled in a standard configuration, the fool of a, the face of a schoolgirl, the body of a stripper. You need some thick beer goggles to miss the work she's had done. Interesting. So let's check this table over here. The Persona Fix Chip Wiper. I don't know what that is. I think it's probably going to fix these guys. We can erase Holmes' programming and return them to their original formation, their mental status. Basically, we can make them compass mentis, which is exactly what we're going to do. His eyes focus and his hand raises slowly to touch his head wound. The fingers come away wet and sticky. Panic twitches at the corners of his mouth as he surveys the room. First you, then the girl, then down to his own body, which is no longer his. Sweet Jesus! What did he do? What am I? He begins weeping, his body racked in great inconsolable heaving sobs. Yikes. Well, that's the best I can do for you, bud. Sorry. Some, there's something to be thought about, whether it was more merciful just to leave him the way he was without the mem without the uh, realization of what he had become. But in any case, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle. I'm happy to have done this Let's Play here today. Oh, never mind. Well, we'll break it off right here. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're out of time. So I'll see you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody. And of course, keep on running, chummers.